So one of the skeptic God uh, in heaven uh, jokingly said to Sakra that uh, the King of God was exaggerating. So he wanted to test the prince whether or not he's really the bravest, the most courageous <laughs> being or not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my God, <laughs> I'm terrified already. <laughs> when the gods of this kind of heaven come down and want to test you, oh, I don't know, you cannot run anywhere, okay? Even the best spy, the best CIA agent on this planet were to chase you, to hunt you down. You will have more chance to run away than if this god one of these gods come down and try to catch you. Nowhere to run. You cannot escape. You just have to sit there and have to endure whatever they want to measure upon you. This is terrible. I'm already scared. Yeah. Okay, now these god <laughs> from this heaven, they have specialized, specialized in making trouble for a practitioner. And it's not the prince's fault even. He's just only eight years old kid. He did not even say, oh, I'm this, I'm that, I can do this, I can do that, and I want to save the planet, uh, be fast, go green, nothing. <laughs> he didn't do anything. <laughs> it's not his fault. If he grown up already and vowed to save all beings or saying such a great thing like that, then possibly the God should come down and test him. But it's none of their business. I'm telling you, I really don't like these gods at all. They should just mind their own business. In heaven, they have everything they need. They're so happy, joyful. Why do they mess with us? <laughs> we the mortal, we do nothing wrong to them. Ah, never mind, they still want to come down and mess with you. Terrible. So, said and done. This god, not the sacra god, but the the smaller God, maybe subordinate God, yeah? Say to the king that he's going down now to test <laughs> Vatman, just because the king of God praised him. The king of God praised him, not the prince himself. He's only a kid. Oh, see what he's doing, okay? If you're scared, just block your ears. <laughs> now, Vatman, the prince, was playing with children of his age in the... Uh, Chanatkan jungle. The game was to race to a target tree, climb up and come down. It's a kid's game, yeah? And get to that tree, whatever the tree they designate, climb up and come down. So easy. Whoever is the first one to reach the ground was the winner. Yeah. Maybe they all climb up together at one time. And then they all come down together, yeah? See who, whoever come down first. Uh, so, Vatman run the race and was first to climb the tree. They probably do the timing. And then the, the boys on the ground saw a ferocious cobra slithering up around the trunk of the tree. The boys see that. You know who that is already, right? You can guess, right? Suddenly a cobra appear from nowhere, huh? and right exactly where the prince was climbing, and hissing and raised his hood. <laughs> the boy started trembling with fear and awe, run away. Yeah. From a safe distance, they run away far away already from the cobra, and they shouted to the prince, Batman! Do not come down. There's a black serpent on the tree trunk. Don't come down. Vatman, already on his way down, saw the snake and also heard the call of his friends. He shouted back, Be quiet. Don't be afraid. <laughs> so he jumped down. The snake followed him and hissing and leaped at Vatman. Him. Yeah. With astonishing agility, the prince caught the snake by a hood and with a jerk threw it away like a piece of rope. <laughs> he caught <caught's> him. <laughs> wow. 
as we would thought. Huh? Uh, after this, the boys started playing another game. This game called Tindushak. Mm. This game was also a race to a target tree. The winner was to ride piggyback on the losers and return to the base. So whoever loses have to carry the winner on his back <laughs> and then run all the way with the winner on the back, run, run back to the base. The god who had come to test Vataman also joined the group in disguise uh, as a boy. Okay? In the game, when Vatman won, the god got Vatman on his back and started back to the base. The god supposed was the loser then, one of the losers, so he has to carry Vatman on his back and run, run back to the base. Yeah. But on the way, he transformed himself into a giant. Ah. With the prince on his back, the god flew into the sky. Big giant carried the prince, flew into the sky. The boys shouted with fear, Vatman! Vatman! <laughs> but he, the prince, was very undaunted. Hit the giant with his mighty fist, boom! <laughs> the god cried. <laughs> <laughs> the, the giant god cried with pain. Probably he know where to hit, no? <laughs> Maybe here or eyes or whatever. I don't know where he hit, but the god was crying in pain and had to land back on the ground. Vatman jumped from his back, but the Kubrick disappeared, and in his place appeared a god who begged Vatman's <laughs> forgiveness. <laughs> I like that. I like that very much. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know if I should like it because we're not supposed to uh, uh, hit somebody else or anything, but this guy, he deserves it. He messed up and he's bigger than Vatman. So, I think it's okay. <laughs> if it were me <laughs> on, on this uh, giant bag, I would also probably give him him some of my Kung Fu, yeah. Yeah, he, he has no business to go there and mess with the kids' game and then took him to the sky, scaring all the kids like that, right? Bad boy. Hmm? So the god came down and then kneeled on the floor and, and begged the prince to forgive him. Fine, I like that. Now, Indra, I want to test him as well. Oh, there's a next test now. My god, what is this? His life has to be tested all the time. What for? Hmm? Now, in the school, when Vatman entered the ninth year of his age, his parents thought that it was time to impart martial and formal education befitting a Kshatriya boy to him. Kshatriya, yeah? the high class of India, and there are four class. Shastya is the top class, yeah? The class of the warrior, yeah? Of royalty. Oh, well, I don't think it's the, the first one. I think the first is Brahman, no? Any India help me? First is Brahman. 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 Second is Shastya. Okay, correct, yeah. Lucky I remember, otherwise he was laughing at me, see that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Indian, you see, and I know all this since I was younger. And long time, I don't use this kind of knowledge. For what? Yeah. I'm not Indian. Uh, and even Indian people are not often remember these things. They have many other things to learn nowadays, especially learn computer and stuff. Nobody cares about <laughs> Brahma or Shatya or, or, or whatever the class. But in India, when you go to India, you still have to be mindful of these classes. You don't touch the Brahman class, okay? You don't touch their things. You don't try to go too near to them or utter something that's disrespectful. Even if you go in their kitchen, your shadow is already <laughs> making trouble for you. If you cast your own shadow in their kitchen, for them it means contamination, pollution, yeah, in different kind, spiritually, and they don't like that. So therefore, the prince had to learn martial, not just formal education, but martial art as well. 
because he's a Shastra uh, class, okay? Warrior, yeah. They decided to send him to school. So when he went to the school, he offered his respect to the teacher, just like any other ordinary student. In spite of having all worldly knowledge since his birth already, by offering respect to his teacher, Vatman honored the age-old traditional ideals. Even if he knows everything already, but he went to school, he must offer respect to his teacher, just the same like every other child. Huh? You maybe prostrate in front of the teacher, maybe one time, two times, three times, depends. And then uh, you make some offering, yeah? That means you accept him as your teacher and you respect him. You prostrate to his feet, yeah? To show respect and obedience, yeah? And many of the Asian countries have this tradition. Uh, maybe nowadays they don't do that anymore. <laughs> but in some area, uh, possible, still have some little tradition left. Remember last year, there was one Vietnamese uh, old man got initiation and he wanted to prostrate to me three times. He, he keep insisting that it's a tradition, Vietnamese tradition. You have to prostrate to your teacher three times. But I said, no, 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 here nobody prostrate to nobody. <laughs> so please don't do that. Uh, he was very reluctantly not doing it. You know, he would have loved to do it with all his heart. I can see that but I don't want to make it into a tradition here. Imagine uh, 1,000 people just got initiation, and then I just sit here for one hour long, <laughs> waiting for, for the prostration to finish. Huh? Understand? <laughs> how, how do I have time to read books for you? I uh, have to read book at home already. Check out if it's worthy to offer it to you. I read other books also, but it was too complicated. So I did not bring it here, I bring this, this one. It's a very good book, it's simple, even child and adult can enjoy it. Yeah, and I don't have to explain a lot. All I do is just know how to read English, <laughs> simple. <laughs> so nowadays maybe we cut that, yeah? But in the Buddha's time, they still do that, no? And whenever any of the students wanted to ask Buddha some question, a Buddha time, it is written in the sutra, but I guess in every other tradition in India, you know, uh, about Buddha's time, or nowadays even, they still prostrate to the guru, to the master, when they want to ask something, or they, when they first came in to greet him, when they came to, they came visit, not just the first time, but whenever they came visit the master, they bow to the master, and whenever they take leave, they do the same. I think we better not do anything, because if I let him do it, then everybody else would like to do it. And knowing you, you will take your time, and you will keep looking, and you, you try to do it very slowly, <laughs> one extra bow and two extra bow, and then, my God, it will take forever. <laughs> even, even I respect traditions, and it's not a bad tradition, but logistically speaking, <laughs> it's, it's not practical, okay, huh? Yeah, I know many of you also want to do that. You keep asking me, but no, okay? No is no, N-O, no. <laughs> we don't need this kind of respect. We respect inside, okay? We respect by keeping the precept, by being vegan, uh, by meditating diligently, yeah? And really trying to uh, abide by the master teaching and try to go home. That is a real respect. Outer respect, anybody can do. Inside respect is harder. Yeah, I want the inside respect huh? and uh, the proof of the respect, not just bowing on the floor. Anybody can do that. But believe me, after I die, they probably make a statue out of me and put me somewhere, and then people will still come bowing, because that time I cannot forbid them. <laughs> I cannot say anything. <laughs> right, so the teacher gave him the first lesson of the alphabet. Vatsman listened silently. After some time, the teacher called him and asked, Prince, you are just idling. 
Why don't you repeat the lesson and try to memorize it? Yeah. The same like my father told me when I was young. Why don't you ever study anything at home? <laughs> I say, I know it already by heart. So I read it to him, and then he believed to me. Yes. I read without a book, yeah? Without a book. Mm. So in reply, Vartman recited the full alphabet for the teacher. The teacher was very, very surprised. While he was trying to fathom the surprising capacity of the little boy, an old man, an old Brahmin with a tilak on his forehead. Yeah, you know, tilak, right? Yeah, in India people, they, they put some red dot in front of your forehead here, between the eyebrow, a little bit up. Good idea, no? That was a tradition before. The teacher would have put something here, yeah? So that the disciple always remember the third eye. So they remind each other, huh? Or when they look in the mirror, seeing the tilak in front of the forehead, they would not forget where to concentrate. Yeah, it's a good idea. Everything you know of value <laughs> is inside you. So whatever I told you outside, it's, I told you already, it's just past time, no? It's a <laughs> worldly knowledge. Whatever truly divine knowledge is imparted to you without language, without words. So you have that already, yeah? And every time you come to see me, I just entertain you. Mm? <laughs> so now we continue with the prince. Uh, so uh, the teacher was very surprised and was trying to really understand <laughs> the magnitude of this boy uh, intelligence and capacity. So there was one old, old Brahmin with the tilak on his forehead enter the school. Yeah, one day. The teacher greeted him and offered a seat. The Brahman asked some complex question on grammar. The teacher could not reply and remained silent, looking down in shame. Mm. He cannot answer. Yeah. So the Brahman smiled and said, Acharya, please do not bother yourself. I mean, teacher, don't worry, you know. Maybe. Uh, I will ask this a little new student of yours. <laughs> Maybe he can solve my problem. Uh, if you allow me, may I ask him? The prince, yeah. So the teacher consented, and the old Brahman uh, put the complex questions before Vardaman. Yeah. Little Vardaman, without hesitating, gave correct and appropriate answers. The teacher stared dumbfounded at the little boy. The Brahman smiled and said, Acharya, I mean teacher, please Acharya, don't feel insulted. You are not aware that the sun of knowledge of this era is present before your very eyes as Prince Vardaman. He is the future Lord Mahavir Swami, the omniscience. I mean, nothing he cannot do. <laughs> so, it is believed that Indra compiled his questions and Vatman's answers into a book named Indra uh, Vyadaran, I mean, the grammar of the Indra. Indra is another god, yeah? Maybe lower than uh, Chakra, but also very powerful. Okay, he's lower than Chakra, right, or higher? Lord of rain. Huh? Lord of rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lower than the uh, Chakra, but he's still very powerful. Also capable of testing. <laughs> Beware of all these gods. They are not always very friendly. I don't know why they're so scared of us practitioners. I mean, the real practitioners will be always tested since little already, with all kinds of things, maybe centipede bites or, or some sickness or some kind of scary situation and uh, family trouble, you know. Uh, when you were little already, they already test you how you solve this family problem for your parents even, when parents are helpless. 
how you help them also. Uh, I, I had also some cases like that. Yeah. So they even compiled these questions and answers into a book, yeah, I mentioned already. Okay, this is two goddesses have tested uh, vitamin, yeah, two. But these are nothing. These tests are nothing, believe me, compared to the one that Lord Mahavira had to endure afterward in his adult life and in his ascetic life, seeking the truth. The more determined you are to help humankind or help all beings, the more tests you will have to undergo. And not everyone passed the test. And that's why we don't have many masters. Because some tests are very, very severe, above human endurance and intellect and capacity. Okay, now they are talking about Mahavira's family. Okay, we will finish that. And tomorrow we will talk about his life as a monk, okay? Ascetic monk, not just normal monk, but ascetic monk, extremely ascetic, yeah. After you heard the story about his asceticism, you feel very, very lucky and grateful to be able to sit here on a soft cushion and a clean floor and have a roof and have aircon and fan and whatever.